The weather had to be a factor Friday. There was rain, there was sleet, there was snow. Well, it was a factor, Mike. Uh, it's no question about that, but it was the coldness more than anything else as far as uh, the rain and it being wet. We've practiced in quite a bit of rain this year, and I'm sure that Boston College had too. But uh, it was the coldness that we were not used to, and I'm sure uh, some of our kids had not been in uh, as cold a weather as that was. At some point in time during the first half there, there was winds of up to 40, 45 miles an hour, I understand. Well, they have the football here, and they try to establish something on the ground, I good guess. Good run here oh. by their uh, running back, Stratford. Uh, they did run some uh, good plays. They hurt us a little bit strong side with a trap out of the eye formation. Here's Flutie going back. Uh, trying to find one of his receivers. His favorite receiver, Brennan, is split in there downfield. But uh, here's uh, Emmanuel King coming in for one of the sacks that we got. Emmanuel played extremely well throughout the game. I thought we did a good job overall with Flutie as far as standing in front of him or as far as pressuring him, making him throw a little bit before he was ready to throw. He was not up to his par as far as production in the ball game. Here's the draw play back to the backside with Stratford running the football. A little bit of a Statue of Liberty type play. They had a penalty on the play, of course, and, uh, and sets the ball back for them. That field looks awfully wet. Was it slippery out there? Well, it's uh, wet, but the uh, type of field that it was, I don't think it was uh, that much of a problem as far as uh, being slippery or anything. Here's a punter who has a snap up high, and he has to go up to get it. It makes him slow, and we have a punt rush on and take advantage of it again in slow motion here. and We're just right in on top of him before he can do anything with the football. This was the key right here for our offensive team, I think. When you have the ball on the eight yard line, you're starting right here, you need to be able to put it in the end zone. We falter here, have a procedure penalty, uh, bring it back. <clears throat> we still have an opportunity to get it down in close enough to put it in for a touchdown, but we still wind up, when it's all said and done, settling for a field goal. Here's a little quarterback draw by Walter Lewis. It gets it down to about the one and a half, two yard line. And then their player, one of their best, best players, their linebacker, DeGross, comes through to make the stop on uh, Ricky Moore. Van and Tiffin from 19 yards away, and Alabama's on top three to nothing in the first quarter. Then we kick it away again. Terry Sanders did a real good job all day, whether it was kicking with the wind or into the wind, which uh, kicking into the wind, is, uh, it was a real strong wind, and we, we chose to squib kick it on the ground most of the day. Our defense holds again, and they punt it away to us. Punting into the wind, <clears throat> little man Greg Richardson does a real good job of filling the punts, made real good decisions all day and getting the ball back up field for us. Alabama threw the ball only 12 times in the football game. Was it the wind or the wetness or the cold? Well, we felt like uh, regardless of, here's, here's one of the many fumbles that we uh, wound up losing, just, just really slips out of Walter Lewis's hands. Here, when we get the ball back again, uh, uh, run the toss play to Kerry Good running the draw play with the quarterback again. But as far as running the football, uh, you're talking about and ask the question, Mike, we felt like going into the game that we could run the football on Boston College. Uh, we also felt like if it was rainy, a bad weather type day that uh, uh, presented some problems as far as throwing the football, that it would be to our advantage. Here's a big uh, big breaker, about a 22-yarder to Ricky Moore. Just a, just a simple dive uh, play up through, the, up through the shoot. Here it is again for 16. And uh, you get him loose in the secondary, uh, no one man's going to tackle Ricky Moore. It was cold, getting some hands warm with the heaters. I saw a lot of players around there. The end of the first quarter, it's three to nothing. Here we come back again with that dive play. Gets uh, six or eight yards to Ricky Moore. They're pursuing the football. Pretty rough now. <clears throat> Running the option play. Waller chooses to keep it. Takes quite a lick there. And it's still raining right here. It's raining, wind's blowing, and it's sleeting a little bit, a little bit of snow mixed in with it. Come up with a fourth down situation, and we sneak it, and Walter Lewis does a real good job of picking up the first down. Going to run the option, play the strong side, and uh, wind up losing the football, putting it in Ricky Moore's stomach right here. Well, one of eight times uh, that we fumbled the ball. Here's one of those times that we pressured Flutie, and we come up with a big interception. I think we're going to see it again in slow motion here. Freddie Robinson. From the rear. Freddie Robinson makes the interception, yes. This is one of those times where we're, where we're putting some pressure on the quarterback and making him throw before he's quite ready to throw it. And we come up with a big play from the defensive standpoint. They're in on us right here real good on Ricky Moore. But Ricky Moore had, a, had an, another outstanding day for us, 109 yards on the day, the fourth game in a row that he's had over 100 yards, and I think it makes his fifth year for the season. 
<clears throat> Here's one of those fluke type things. Uh, we don't quite get the ball to uh, Jesse Benders on a slant play. He's trying to make the reception. It bounces up in the air and they make the interception. Here's a real good uh, run and toss play. We lose the ball right here. <clears throat> you know, this is, uh, it looks like it's getting to be an epidemic. Uh, you know, but uh, fumble is, uh, in my mind anyway, is the worst thing in the game. Gary Good running there. He had 70 yards on the afternoon. And he lost the ball right there, but they had ruled him down. Here's a toss play to Lenny Patrick. Does a real good job running right here. I tell you, losing Lenny to a sprained ankle hurt us early in the game because we had plans going into the game of playing Lenny and running him uh, a lot. But he sprained an ankle, and I think that hurt us somewhat, losing him early in the game. Look at the statistic there at that point in the game, 142 to 11 in yards rushing. Well, we're running the ball real good, Mike, on him, but... Uh, you know, all those yards don't really mean a lot if you if you if you put the ball on the ground and let them uh, allow them a chance to, to come up with it. Here's another one. Uh, we're down there knocking on the door on the one yard line. We fumble it, get it back to the eight, and here's uh, where we wind up having to settle for another field goal rather than punching it in for a touchdown. Third down play here, and Walter is sacked. It'll bring Van Tiffin on again. This field goal is up and good, and Alabama now leads by a score of six to nothing. You can see the you can snowflakes see the snow there. And the snow and the sleet mixed in. Like I say, it's kind of chilly right here. Terry Sanders kicking off again. A little squib kick, trying to keep it low on the ground into that wind uh, now, which is some uh, 30, somewhere around 30, 40 mile an hour wind. Right down there on the field, it's a gusting tight wind. Does the wind affect the passing, it, no matter which way you're well, going? Oh, it sure does. When it's, a, when it's a gusting tight wind, that means it's just blowing around. It's not blowing in any one certain direction. And uh, you can throw a ball, and it might uh, go off course. It's, it's, it's t really tougher on a receiver than it is a quarterback actually throwing the football. It's tougher on a receiver as far as his concentration on the ball and, and making the catch, making the play on the football itself. BC's <clears throat> driving here. Ricky Thomas with that tackle. I think this is uh, BC's 66-yard drive here. Mistaken. We do a real good job of swarming the football here. But overall, I thought I thought our defense played well, with the exception of two times, you know, they're late in the game uh, when you say, well, they have to stop them. But uh, the offense gave them real good field position. Almost a great goal line stand here. Went all the way down to fourth down. Well, we just missed making the play right there, uh, back there for a little loss on the... Just missed the tackle there. That was Hold him right here. That's the third down play, and he Hold did not right get here. in. They go on fourth down and uh, and get it through there. Got it on the one foot line. Look at that wind on that water. And he gets in, and it's six to six. And then one of the most unusual things I've ever seen. He misses the first extra point. They get a penalty and misses the second. Penalty and misses the second. They missed uh, previous to this game. They had missed. He had missed either three or four. Uh, extra points going into this ball game. Uh, we felt like we could do some things, uh, whether it was field goal, extra point, or, or punt, uh, because their snapper had had some uh, had some poor snaps, like on that first one where we uh, got the ball down on the eight yard line. He had a high snap that caused that. That's the last play of the first half, I believe, and Alabama would walk back and go into the locker room with the score all tied: Alabama six and Boston College six. Alabama's only touchdown of the day came on a play by the special teams. That's a blocked punt, uh, Mike, by Paul Tripoli, and here's Anthony Smiley picking it up and running back in. He's showing his old form of being a former high school fullback. A uh, key block by Vincent Elder right there uh, enables him to get across the goal line for the score. The extra point was good, and Alabama was out on top 13-6. to six. We're in the fourth quarter now. There's a toss play to Ricky Moore back to the weak side, picks up eight, eight or nine yards, which is a real good uh, consistent play for us all day. A handoff going inside for a couple. A toss play here to Kerry Good. Makes a good run, a good cut here, and uh, gets a little added extra yardage ticked on, uh, tacked onto it uh, with a face mask penalty. Uh, here's a draw play that we'd run a couple of times earlier. It didn't look like it was going to work at, for any yardage here, but Walter Lewis just does an absolutely super job of making the happened? yards out of nothing. <clears throat> Another play up to shoot by Ricky Moore. A little fake toss play that we'd worked uh, very successfully. Uh, they come in and got a stun on and catch us on that particular play that particular time. Another toss play to, to Kerry Good, and they shut it off pretty good, playing pretty good defense there against it. Here's a big play in the game right here where they come through on a blitz. We fail to pick it up, and we get a sack, 
had the ball on the 15 yard line and uh, that put us back a few more yards and we kick it a field goal and it comes up just barely short. And the score remained 13 to six. And here they go running the ball uh, with their big, uh, big fullback on us. They hurt us a little bit up inside with a little trap play and here they try it again and we shut it off pretty good. <clears throat> but like I say, overall our defense did a real good job all day. They would do a good job on their receiver, their tight end, who's their second leading receiver and the second uh, favorite receiver of, of Flutie's. Here's a punt. Uh, here's one you'd like to keep from rolling around on the ground this, this long and losing this much yardage. Uh, but overall, like I said earlier, Greg Richardson did a real good job and made real good decisions all day. And that's a time when there's a lot of wind and, and bad weather is when you want a guy back there that's going to do that. Here's a real good run by Kerry Goo, but at the end of the run right here, at the bottom of it, <clears throat> the guy tackling him puts his arm through and knocks the ball loose uh, for a fumble. This is with about eight and a half minutes on the clock. We've got it 13 to six, got the ball game under control and moving it. Then all of a sudden, lightning strikes and we turn it over to them in good football position and they take it right down the field and score. Here's a bootleg, uh, loose containment on Flutie, which is one of the big things we wanted to do. We lost containment on him uh, two or three times during the game uh, and he hurt us on it. But overall, I thought we kept containment on him pretty good throughout the entire game. As you said, they would take the ball on down the field now and put it in the end zone. They're inside the 10. Inside the 10-yard line here, Stratford, uh, just a handoff out of the eye. <clears throat> then we come with a little bootleg and hits his tight end in there for the, for the touchdown. And they would make the extra point and the game would be tied at 13. Well, actually, they're going for two. They were going to go for two there, Mike and they come up with a procedure penalty, which put the ball back five yards, so they, they elected to kick the extra point at that point to make it 13 all. They kick the ball on the ground here, and uh, we fumble around with it a little bit, but we finally pick it up, and Joe Carter does a real good job of getting it back out to the 20-yard line, and we turn right around, turn the ball over to him again, in excellent field position, in scoring position. There it is again, in slow motion. No, we just, uh, I just don't think we had the ball in there, and we give it to him on the 33-yard line. <clears throat> and again, and they will take advantage of the turnover. They're going to take it right in like a good football team will, a good offensive team, and uh, take advantage of the turnover. Here's a big play here to his favorite receiver, wide receiver, uh, Brennan. <clears throat> and they give it to the big back, Stratford. And he takes it down to about the four-yard line, three-yard line. And they and take it right in for the touchdown. And they kick the extra point here. They have a new kicker in the game, and his kick is true, and it is 20 to 13. Here they kick it on the ground to us again. Phil Carter comes up with the ball. Still does a good job of getting it out to about the 28-yard 20, uh, line. Now, at this point right here, <clears throat> we didn't give him very good pass protection, but we put it up in the air there and do a great job. Preston Gotha does downfield. Waller does a heck of a job with a guy hanging all over and get the ball down there. Preston Gotha does a great job of concentration come up with a football here. <clears throat> then we hit uh, Jesse Benders on a slant play. Gets us about 18 more yards out of it. Here they have a blitz on. Now we're just running for a life getting out of the way of the blitz. Lose a few yardage there. Here a fumble, but Mike Adcock is on it. Mm -hmm. so like I say, it was kind of hard to hold on to. Fourth down play here. Fourth down play, and we don't convert. They take it over. Our defense plays defense. They come up with a. Don't quite get the ball to it. Had Greg Richardson over. Don't quite get the ball to it. <clears throat> now they take the ball. It's a little less than three minutes to go in the game. We're utilizing our timeouts at this point. 228, as you can see at the screen there, bottom of the screen. And here's a play where Doug Flutie just turns around and runs the other way. Runs the other way and picks up a big first down. This is something that he can really hurt you on if you don't keep containment on it. He does a real good job of scrambling. Now it's 2.15 to go. <clears throat> We're gonna come up with a football here in just a minute. We're going for the football. Need a fumble, need a turnover right here. There there we go. Comes. Defense comes up with a play. Now we've got the ball right at two minutes. Right at two minutes to go in the game. No timeouts. Come up, can't quite hang on to it there with Preston Gothard. 
Now we have a procedure penalty, which you can't have. This is a time where you got to have great concentration right now. Then we trip over one of our guards, offense, offensive guards, foot. 54 seconds. There was a procedure penalty. Actually, it wasn't a procedure penalty. There was an injured, injured player, player on the field. Yeah. Uh, and they had blown it dead, <clears throat> but they didn't, uh, had not known it back there. Then we come up with, I think this is the fourth down situation. Fourth down in 20. Make a play to Greg Richardson over the middle. He does a good job of running with the football after the catch. Trying to get over and get out of bounds, but he can't quite make it. 27 seconds and counting. Flag. A penalty marker, which is going to stop the clock. I think it was a procedure penalty. We're going to go down the sideline and <clears throat> get a flag interference call on Joey Jones here. Defensive back knocks him down. Six seconds left and Six still a chance to left. score. Still got one chance. Got one play. Here we count. Here Walter's running out. Got some clear ground in front of him, but not clear enough. Not clear enough quite get it down there to get the score. The game ends. Boston College 20, Alabama 13.